PM Narendra Modi returned after a successful state visit to the USA where he was hosted at the White House by President Biden and the First Lady. He also addressed a joint session of Congress. and multiple MOUs and deals were signed during the visit. But the one that stood out is the MOU between GE Aerospace and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited or HAL for joint production of F414 jet engines in India. The GE F414 engines will power the LCA Mark II fighter aircraft and the first version of India's fifth generation fighter aircraft, the AMCA. You might be thinking, these are Indian jets, then why do we need an American engine to power them? We'll try to find answers to that question and about the complexities of jet engine technology and also India's experience with the Kaveri engine and why it failed. Hello guys, I am Saurav and welcome to the ARC. In 2009, it was decided to split the LCA program in two parts and develop the LCA Mark II to address the limitations of LCA Mark I and Mark I-A. In 2010, after extensive evaluations, GE F414 was selected to power the LCA Mark II aircraft. The 98 kN thrust class F414 is powerful, fuel efficient and extremely reliable. The engine already powers the American F-A-18 Super Hornets and Swedish Saab Gripen fighters. The report suggests HL will manufacture these engines in India after transfer of technology and 80% of engine technology will be transferred to India. The TOT may include special coating for erosion and corrosion, coating and machining of single crystal turbine blades, laser drilling for combustion, among other things. Now this is huge in terms of India-US relations because US has never in history allowed transfer of such critical technology to any other country, which is why this engine deal is much more significant. In May 2022, US President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the ISET to elevate and expand their strategic technology partnership and defense industrial cooperation between the governments, businesses and academic institutions of the two countries. In January this year, Indian NSA Ajit Doval travelled to the US with a high power delegation. He met his counterpart Jake Sullivan and launched the US-India ISET. US NSA Jake Sullivan visited India between June 13 to 14, in which he reviewed preparations for the upcoming official state visit of the Prime Minister and also the two NSAs unveiled a roadmap for cooperation at a stakeholder event on the initiative on critical and emerging technologies. The GE F414 engine production in India could be the first major outcome of this new partnership. There is also another dimension to the US's interest in sharing these critical technologies with India now. More than 50% of India's defense equipment are still of Russian origin. So from a foreign policy perspective, this is also an attempt by the US to reduce Russia's influence on India. India's arm imports from Russia have been steadily declining over the past few years. As India realized a while back that in this era of uncertainties, putting all your eggs in one basket is not wise. But we have to understand one thing here. Earlier, India had no other option but to look towards Russia for major defense equipment. Because in the past, all the cutting edge technologies were denied to India by the West, starting from nuclear submarines to jet engines. Russia, on the other hand, has always offered to share its advanced technologies with India, starting from nuclear submarines and S-400 missile systems to partnership on BrahMos missiles. It's also important to note here that it has not been a one-way street either. 
India's defense purchases have kept the Russian defense industry marred with funds crunch afloat. But times are changing. Russia's proximity to China is not good news for India. China too purchases Russian defense equipment and reverse engineers them to produce its own. With the kind of funds and resources at its disposal, China is now building and expanding its military like never before. And India has to keep pace with these developments in the region. As its army remains locked in in a conflict with the Chinese on the northern borders. But the main question here is why do we still need to depend on other countries for jet engine technology? The simple answer is it's pretty damn difficult. Only four countries in the world produce their own engines to power their fighter jets. The US, UK, France and Russia. China has been reverse engineering Russian jet engines for quite some time but has not been successful. However, their WS-10 and WS-15 engines do look promising. Now let's try to understand why are jet engines so difficult. An engine is central to the design of the aircraft. Aircraft's aerodynamic performance, fuel carrying capacity, weapons load, everything is affected by the engine. Now let's take a look at how a modern turbofan jet engine works. The jet engine works on Newton's third law of motion that every action has equal and opposite reaction. In this case, exhaust gases leaving the engine at high velocity will propel the aircraft forward with an equal and opposite force, otherwise known as thrust. A fan at the front of the engine pulls air around the engine and draws in air into the core. The air then goes into the compressor and the compressor blades squeeze the air. The squeezed air is then mixed with jet fuel. Then in the combustion chamber, the mixture is ignited, resulting in rapid expansion of the gases. The rush of hot air spins the turbine, which in turn spins the shaft. Connected to the fan, the hot air ultimately cops out from the exhaust nozzles, producing thrust. A portion of the air bypasses the combustion chamber and is directed around the engine core, producing additional thrust. Though the operation is similar to any internal combustion engine, the major challenge for jet engines is the temperature of the turbine, which goes upwards of 1700 degrees Celsius. At these high temperatures, the turbine blades need to be structurally stable. Any metal alloy would show deformities at such high temperatures, which is why single crystal blades are used. And this blade technology is the most critical stumbling block that many countries have not been able to figure out. A jet engine is where all the branches of science and engineering like electrical, mechanical, metallurgy have to come together. But why did we not attempt to make one? We did a while back, but we failed. And that's where the Kaveri engine saga starts. The story of Kaveri engine starts more than three decades back. The program to develop an indigenous jet engine received authorization from the government in 1986. It started with the LCA program and was initially supposed to power the light combat aircraft. DRDO's GTRE was entrusted with developing this turbofan engine, which was named Kaveri. But as an interim measure, the General Electric F404 engine was selected for the prototype LCA aircraft. Kaveri engine's design was state of the art. It's a low bypass after burning turbofan engine. But with no prior experience in developing such a complex engine, there were technical challenges right from the start. If we look at the timeline, in 2002, it was reported to have issues with its turbine blades. In 2004, it failed high altitude tests in Russia, which made its installation on the LCA unlikely. And ADA had to go with more US made F404 engines. But the development still continued for its installation in other future projects. In 2010, several prototypes of the Kaveri engine completed successful flight tests 
on a flying test bed in Russia. Later French company Snecma, which is renamed as Safran, which produces the M88 engines that power the Rafale fighter jets, was hired for technical assistance on Kaveri. Kaveri had four teething issues. Decayed performance at high altitude, insufficient thrust, excessive weight, and an unexpected noise during high power trials. And most of the issues remained unresolved. After India's decision to procure 36 Rafale aircraft from France in 2015, there were discussions on reviving the Kaveri engine as part of the deal's offset commitments by Safran. Safran did work on the engine and the noise and vibration issues were resolved with slight design modifications. But it still lacked on two major parameters. The engine is overweight by close to 100 kg and it generates a maximum sustained thrust of 70 to 75 kilonewton against the required 85 to 90 kilonewton. There was an offer by Safran to replace Kaveri's core with the M88s, but it was declined because the IP rights would still have been with Safran and we would not have gained anything. So Kaveri was meant to power the LCA, but it failed to meet the technical requirements. But did the program fail entirely? No, the engine design and tech are still world class, which is why the engine is now being repurposed to power the Ghatak u caps the dry thrust version of the Kaveri, that is, without the afterburning stage, produces 48 kN of thrust, which is adequate to power the 14 ton class UCAV. Kaveri failed mainly due to four reasons. The first reason is complexity of the engine design. Kaveri was way too complex to be developed from scratch without any prior experience. The second one is no foreign collaboration. DRDO should have collaborated with a foreign engine manufacturing company right from the start. Third is unavailability of test facilities in India. For every flight test, the engines were to be taken to Russia to be tested on the flying test bed, which was really cumbersome. Fourth and the most important one is allocation of funds. Government of India spent close to 2100 crore rupees or around 250 million dollars on the Kaveri engine program spanning over three decades. Was it enough? Data suggests it wasn't. As any technologically advanced jet engine requires upwards of $2 billion for development. The harsh truth is we lacked conviction and willpower in developing such a complex technology. The F414 engine deal can be transformational for Indian aerospace industry. But to what extent the jet engine technology can be absorbed by the Indian industries is yet to be seen. Also, it's important to keep our defense preparedness up. And with possibly more than a thousand F-414 engines to be ordered in future, we had to manufacture them in India. But the fact of the matter is, transfer of technology is a myth. No country wants to transfer its critical technology to another, irrespective of how close the countries are. Every piece of critical technology has to be developed indigenously. Given the changing geopolitical dynamics of the world, Strategic autonomy can't be compromised. India has to invest its funds and resources in developing these cutting-edge technologies at home. We are behind the race and we need to catch up and catch up fast. Thanks for watching. If you like what we do, please do consider liking, sharing and subscribing our channel. Thank you.